Here's what he spoke to me. He said, America, it's payday. You've worked your iniquity, and now it's time to receive your wages. The wages of sin are death. And those who sow to the wind will reap the whirlwind. America, it's payday. Do you not know that I am a just God? I reign upon the just and the unjust. I pay every man according to his works. My scales are not uneven, and I am just to recompense to all men their due wages. America, it's payday. Do you think you could ignore me and hope that I would just go away? I never left you. You left me. And that void is filled with the stench of your enemies. Foul, unclean, and merchants of death. Lift up your hands and see the blood of the innocent cascading down, staining your nation, and lifting up a cry unto my ears. America, you will pay. To my church, why are you so idle as you witness your idols falling? What more do you need to see and to realize that the final harvest is before you? Listen to this. Many will not make this journey, but like Gideon's men, I know who I have chosen to finish the course. Heavenly Father, help me today to articulate this message and the urgency in which it has been deposited in my spirit. Hide me behind the shadow of the cross that no man will remember my name, but remember the name that's above every single name. I ask Jesus that you will take this message and make it go far and wide, not for a personality, but for the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. Let it be an urgent alert to the house of God, I pray in Jesus' mighty name. The title of this message is called Payday. Payday. And there is no doubt that there comes a time when you work your work of iniquity and you have to stand before an awesome God, a sovereign God, every one of us. None of us are excluded. None of us can stand behind our pastors or our wives or our spouses or a committee or some type of accomplishment of your life, you will stand naked before God for everything that you have done in your life. And that is not just for a person, but for a nation. There comes a time when we will stand before God and God will require of us some type of answer for what we've done with what we've been given. And if you look at America today, we have squandered, if you will, the inheritance and the birthright that God gave us, that brave men and women sealed it in their own blood during wars on foreign soil. And preachers preached and prophesied and kept us walking in holiness by declaring and decreeing that it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. But we've abandoned both preacher, prophet, and soldier. And most of all, we've abandoned God. And we have churned a course, our own direction, our own compass, and we decided on this journey in America that we would do what we wanted to do. And we caused a void to be in our hearts. And when we did, the paganistic gods of Egypt, Babylon, unclean spirits have invaded this nation and have invaded the church. And so there's a payday. And I don't know about you, but I would rather pay forward now with repentance than to stand before an almighty God and have no excuse. And the urgency that I have to say to you today is get your house in order. I'm not talking about the beanie weenies in your pantry. I'm talking about your spiritual man. If this is the last message you ever hear from me and you walk out these doors, 
That is up to you, but before you leave, let me remind you, there's a payday someday, and you can find another preacher to placate to you and powder your nose, if you will, or you're behind. But one day you'll come back to this message. Not the messenger, but the message. And you'll come back to God and recognize and realize there's no other way but the holy way of righteousness. And so as this weighed so heavily upon me, I've preached many, many messages over 30 years. I've preached many prophetic realities over the years, but I have never felt the heaviness and the sour bitterness in my spirit than I do about this message today. I want you to go to Jeremiah chapter 4. Jeremiah chapter 4. If you don't have a Bible, there's one on the back. You need to get you a Bible. And don't be like some of these furries out there that are going to go to war with lipstick and hit them with the purse. Somebody with me today? If you're in the army, get a weapon. Don't go nowhere without your weapon. Bayonet. Get it ready. Sharpen it. Know the word. Are you there yet? Jeremiah chapter 4, and the title of this message is called Payday. Beginning in verse 1. If thou will return, O Israel. Notice this, if. Now let me give you the backdrop that the Israel was in great danger because they had a superficial revival under Josiah, just like America. We've had superficial revival for decades. It hasn't been deep because true revival is not a bunch of people, nickels and noses. True revival is the breaking of the heart of men before an almighty God and saying, God, it is I that is full of sin. It's not the church being filled. I would rather have a few folk that love God than thousands of people who are backslidden and ready to bust hell wide open. I'd rather have a couple house folks, if you will, some church mothers who love God and know how to weep at the altar and pray and intercede and get a hold of God than some slick-haired, shiny-shoe businessman that sits up front, Brother Bucketmouth, Sister Broadbottom. Is anybody here today? And we're missing it today in the house of God because we've chased after the things that are polished and pretty instead of going after the old way. Come on, somebody. We've gotten fancy today with our smoke and our mirrors and all of our fancy stuff. I would rather sing like I'm doing now than have to deal with a lip wrist on the keyboard. All right. uh, see, you, know, you can't handle me today. I've made my peace with God. I understand it's payday. And I understand there's going to be many folks, and you can look around, there's going to be many folks that are not going to be able to make this journey. Why? Because they're not chosen like Gideon's men. Find out about Gideon's men. Find out what separated them and learn from it. Are you still in verse 1? If, remember this, the covenant of God always swings open on the hinges of if. We're so demanding of God and say, God, you owe me because I'm an American. You owe me because I'm a Christian. You owe me because I went to an altar 30 years ago, but I've been in the pub. Come on, somebody. 60 years since then. You owe me, God, and so on and so forth. And God says, no, the covenants, they swing open with those hinges of if, if you obey. If my people, 
if you will return to me, if you will come to me, if you'll bend the knee, if you'll bow the heart, if you'll confess, if you'll declare, if you'll read, if you'll walk in holiness, if you'll turn away from youthful lust, if you do it. And God says, I'll meet you. No, but we want God to do it all. Honey, this ain't Burger King. This is the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords, and you are liable for what you hear today. That book in your hand, that's your liability policy. You need to read it sometime. You need to find out what you're liable for. I'm going to run around this building all by myself. You need to find out and quit going to church thinking, mm, amen, yes, sir, mm, eh. You don't even know what you're amen about. You have no idea the obligation you just made when you signed upon the dotted line and said, I'm a believer. Right. Honey, you just joined the army of God. And you wonder why all hell breaks loose? What you think? Oh, it amazes me. And you have to preach sometimes like this to wake folks up. Jeremiah chapter 4, I'm trying to get there, verse 1. You won't stop me. If thou will return, O Israel, saith who? The Lord. Return unto me. Now watch this. There was a false revival under King Josiah. Babylon, if you will, Nebuchadnezzar, was knocking at the door. The prophets were warning and saying, All hell's going to break loose. You better get yourself in order. You better prepare yourself. You better put down that pornography. You better quit shacking up. You better quit sweeping, sweeping with everything that moves. You better get rid of your lustful thoughts. You better crush out them habits. Hello, somebody. And the prophet was saying, it's coming, it's coming. Oh, no, 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 no. No, Pastor Fancy Pants was saying, under King Josiah, everything's wonderful. Kumbaya, my Lord, kumbaya. But Jeremiah said, no, you're going to die. Now, which channel would you rather listen to, kumbaya or you're going to die? Most folks want to hear kumbaya. They want to be lulled to sleep. That's why the churches are packed in those places because there's nothing more than kinder care. They don't have children's ministry. That is the ministry, children's ministry for all of them. Come on now, I need somebody to talk to me straight. I need somebody to lay it, lay it out on me. I need, I need somebody to put the boot where it belongs. If you like that kind of church, you, you just need to go on and find pastor pacifist somewhere and get you a passy and suck on that thing until you quit whining. But for me, I need the word. I need to hear from God. We're at war. Do you recognize and realize that we're at war? We're not only in war in the Ukraine. We're in the war in the Middle East. We're not in, only in the war there. We're in the war in our streets. Yes. We're war, at war in our families. Yes. It's crazy. And church folk want to act normal. You can't act normal during wartime. Things change. And it's payday for America. But he said, if... So Josiah, Josiah had a false revival. Here comes Nebuchadnezzar. And God never wants judgment to come. He always delays it, but it's never denied if you don't repent. God doesn't want, that's not his first plan of attack, if you will, of correction. But he holds it and he says through his prophets, I'm going to judge you. I'm coming. I'm going to allow your enemies to do what they're supposed to do. And you sit there and you listen to all these other preachers. Why? Because they, they look better. Come on, somebody. They've got more stuff. They, they drive the fancy cars and, and all that stuff. Come on now. The preacher and the wife look like Ken and Barbie. No, we, I, me and my wife are not Ken and Barbie. More like G.I. Joe and G.I. Jan. But I guarantee this one thing, when all hell breaks loose, you know who to go to. I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to fight with you. We're going to fight against the enemy. We're going to win this thing because this ain't a pageantry. But the church has made it a pageantry. You know, let me go to where they're the cutest. 
Y'all look in the mirror lately? Watch this. Verse 1, I'm trying to get you mad for a reason. If thou return, O Israel, saith the Lord, return to me. And if thou wilt put away thine abominations out of my sight, then thou shalt not remove. I think that's fair. God says, just come back to me. Get rid of the garbage in your life, and I will not remove you. I think that's just absolutely fair. But we look at God and say, God, I want it all. I want everything. I want to be able to smoke on the side and drink on the side. I want to be able to look at pornography on the side. Then I want to come to the church so I can be a part of the club and hang out with everybody, let everybody think I'm a good person, let everybody do. Uh, come on now. I want to soothe my conscience to make myself feel good. But as soon as that crystal pistol opens up, you know where I'm headed. I'm headed down to the crystal slipper. I'm going to go put one on. I know I'm feeling good and I'm preaching right because I feel the resistance. And you know it's the truth. And God says, if you just put those things away, I'll bless you. How many times has he sent prophets across America circumnavigating, just, just preaching the circuits, if you will, telling folks, put away those things. And we didn't want to hear those preachers. We found those preachers that said, God loves you the way you are. You can do what you need to do because it's all about amazing grace. And Jesus understands. Yeah, he understands that you're rotten. He understands that you're a sinful man. That's why he came and died on the cross for you. And he gave you the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm talking to mature people. If you're just saved, I'm going to help you walk through this thing. But if you think you're going to slip and slide and fool God for 20 years and do all these things and nobody's going to notice it, you come to the wrong house because you come to the place to get fixed because I'm not looking for those that are perfect. I'm looking for those that are broken. That's what this house is all about because every single one of you all broken, including me. Come on now, aren't you glad? I said, aren't you glad God's got something to work with? Give it to him. Come on, every day, say, God, fix this mess. Help me. That's funny. We used to spend more time in the mirror trying to do this and do that. Man, get in the mirror of the Word and say, God, fix this thing. I got issues. The Lord says, I can work with a guy like that. I can work with a woman like that. Watch what he says here. And thou shalt not remove. Get rid of the abomination. You know, I'm just going to say this, and I don't care if you get mad at me. Just, just, it's okay. I took up your offering, so I'm good. <laughs> Might be a one-time gift, but that's all right. But it amazes me how many people call themselves believers will celebrate Halloween. Oh, here he goes. My God, honey, get the kids. Get out of here. It's the truth. You'll go celebrate this day of death and have all these things in your house, jack-o'-lanterns and spiders and stuff you normally wouldn't want around your house, but on that day you would. And you know what I'm going to start praying? This is for believers. I'm going to pray that every single one of your little skeletons starts manifesting. All your little Frankensteins come out of the pantry and grab a hold of you by the nappy old neck and do to you what they did to the sons of Sceva tore them apart, kicked their butt, and made them naked. Read it. That's what happened. Sit there and sell it. Oh, we're going to decorate. Are you, in, are you crazy? There was never a good time to do it, but it's surely not a good time at all right now with what's happening on the face of the earth, and God's wrath is, and his fury is raging because the cup of indignation is almost overflowing. And you're going to play? Ain't no way. But I say, watch, watch. If I drive by your house and I see something, I'm going to pray it just gets you. <laughs> and that'll fix you. Don't you think? You think that thing's all innocent. Let that spider grab right off the top of your forehead while you're sleeping. <laughs> oh, man. How dare you, Pastor? I love you. And if that's the way to scare the hell out of you, then that's what we got to do. And I'm telling you, all y'all should do that. Just start driving by people's house and say, Lord, let that thing manifest. Let that Frankenstein come right through the door. Wake up and find Dracula on your neck. 
See, I'm making, I'm making light of it, but it's the truth. And then we sit there and say, we love God. You're a hypocrite. Yes. You don't love God. Yes. You are a secular pagan Christian. That's all you are. That's all you are. And I'm going to start telling people like it is. I've been doing it for years. But you're just a secular pagan Christian. That's all you are. And the Christians just name. A true believer doesn't live that way. I don't want nothing to do with darkness. I drive by these places and I see this skeleton and, and a grave and, and, and a shovel. Man, I don't want to be near that stuff. I'll beat the bananas out of that stinking thing. <laughs> Starts moving towards me. The last place I want to be is in the grave. But people, they, they fantasize with death. Americans love it. Go to a haunted house. Are you kidding me? You can go to most churches and get that and not pay anything. But, I mean... And I'm telling you, America is a haunted house. And demon powers in our streets today, they're in our schools, they're in every single institution of our nation, and you don't have to wait for October 31st. It's all the time. Why would you play with that? And these are the things that God was telling them. Get rid of these abominations. Rid yourself of these things that are unrighteous. There's people that are, call themselves believers and are like horror movies. I don't want nobody scaring me. It's bad enough what I see in the mirror when I wake up. I don't want nothing. I don't want to be scared. Why? Why do you want to be tormented? Why is there a fantasy with being tormented? I don't appreciate it. Come on, somebody. Listen to me now. The abominations. He said, I want you to get rid of these things. Get rid of this unrighteousness and this lust for blood and this lust for murder and this lust for violence and all these other things. Get rid of these things. Why? Why? Are you trying to ruin the party? Verse 2. And thou shalt swear the Lord liveth in truth and judgment. So I'm going to put away all those things, and then what am I going to do? I'm going to declare that he lives. I'm going to declare his truth. I'm going to declare his righteousness and in righteousness. And all the nations shall bless themselves in him, and in him shall they glory. There was a time when the world would be blessed by America. Today the world despises us. Today the world hates us. And even deeper now in the Middle East than ever before, we've done nothing but sharpen the sword of Islam by what we have done. And I'm not going to get into the fray. I'm not going to get into what's right and what's wrong. I'm just telling you there are actions. There are things that happen when you do things. There's reactions to all things. And sometimes people don't think them out. Nefarious or just stupid. It doesn't matter. Somebody's going to pay the price. But one good thing about it all is it's been written. God knew man would make a fatal decision. God knew man would put himself in this position, and his kingdom will come. His will is going to be done, but there's a payday for it. See, all of this is part of the mechanisms of God, all part of the, the plan of God to bring in what he wants done. So don't be surprised by what happens very soon in the coming days. Watch what he says. He said, I'm going to, there'll be, there'll be my glory. For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up your fallow ground and sow not among thorns. What is this? What I just read to you is called conditional prophecies. Conditional prophecies are this, that God will prophesy a blessing. And he will say, you can be blessed coming in and going out in the city in the field. I'll bless you with divine health. I'll do these things for you. They're conditional. But if you break the conditions on the banner, if you will, the standard of what God said is part of the promise to get that prophecy fulfilled, then he is not obligated to fulfill his side. Then the prophecy is flipped, and you get the opposite of it. In other words, God promises blessing. You choose cursing God wants to give you a payday of goodness 
But America has turned his back upon God, and therefore there's judgment, there's war, and there's death and destruction that is coming upon our country. There is no other way out of it. If you don't like it, turn the channel. Find somebody else to preach to you. But I promise you, you'll come back to this message because there's no way out of this. And I'm doing all that I possibly can to warn the body of Christ to stop being complacent, stop surfeiting, stop partying, stop being drunk, get in the Word, get in life with God, get into His kingdom, get into the ark of God, get into the house of God, get into the safety of God, find out the covenant of God, know your God because nobody's going to save you. The Calvary's not coming, folks. I said, the Calvary's not coming to save us. We're in deep trouble. The nations of the world hate us. We are a hissing to them. And all these allies that we have spent billions and billions and trillions of dollars to help their defense and to build them up, they're not going to be able to help us. I love my Canadian brothers and sisters, but I'm not waiting for their help. Are you with me? I'm not waiting on the French. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Are you here? I'm not waiting on the Bahamians. I love them all. But my help cometh from the Lord. I said my refuge is in him. Wisdom begins when I worship God. And I say, God, what do you want me to do to protect my family? What do you want me to do to protect the church? And follow after that plan. But we have people that are, that are fooled, that don't understand the conditional prophecies. But watch what he says again in verse 3. For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up your fallow ground and sow not among thorns. That's part of the conditional prophecy you break it up what does it mean it means ground that was never hasn't been broken up in a long time some of you stiff necked Christians that are out there you haven't prayed you haven't bent your knee in so long at an altar break up that fallow ground and say God deal with my heart you haven't read the Bible in so long you haven't prayed in the Holy Ghost you haven't done much for God lately come on break up that fallow ground get right now with God Begin to go before him with an inventory and say, God, it is me. Check my heart, God. Look inside of me. No, see, the American Christianity says, well, I ain't killed nobody. I ain't stole from nobody. I guess I'm okay. No, honey, a true Christian, a true disciple says, God, is it I? Am I the one? Am I the one you're speaking to, God? Am I the one that's unclean? Am I the one that's bringing judgment? Am I the one, Father, that's in the way? Oh, Father, cleanse me. Take your fiery finger and write upon the tablets of my heart your will. But we don't hear this preaching anymore. We don't, we don't, we don't do this anymore in the house of God. No, because it's humanistic self-help gospel that's being preached to us. Everything has to be candy-coated. Everything has to be broken up so you can swallow it. Well, sometimes, honey, you just need to take your medicine the way you get it. Verse numero cuatro, number four. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord. Who does it? You. Notice the two actions required of a believer. You break up the fallow ground, and then you circumcise your heart. And take away the foreskins of your heart, you men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire and burn that none can quench it. Do you understand what God is saying? He was telling them, look, you had a false revival under Josiah. You have this form of godliness, but you deny the power thereof. You come to church and look cute and cool, but inside you have dead men's bones. You're wicked. You're mean. You're vicious. You're violent. Come on, somebody. You're lustful. You're hungry for power and hungry for the things of this world rather than contrite, humble, giving, sincere, the fruit of the Spirit. 
You're more interested in the gifts of the Spirit, of the power, rather than the fruit of the Spirit, which is love. And God says, I'm dealing with you. I'm telling you, break this thing up. Circumcise that heart. Say, God, here I am. I take the word. I take that sword, and I give you the foreskin. And I say, God, it hurts. I don't like it. But God, remove from me these things. That's what we need in the house of God. We need some circumcision at the altar of the hearts of men. Not the placating that we do so we can keep your money. I can get ripped about your money. Take your money with you. If that's what it takes, I'm not going to compromise with anybody. I never will. I never will compromise. That's why this church don't owe nobody nothing. We don't owe anybody nothing because God has done it. And there's freedom in that. And there's power in that to be able to say it is God and God alone. Because if man promotes you, you always owe man. You always will. Whether it's Bishop So-So in some denomination or Mr. Big Bucks on the front row, you will always owe somebody for your promotion if it don't come from God. I want it from God. Man, I feel good today. And I'm only getting started. Don't get nervous. The burns that no man can quench it because of the evil of your doings. Do you see that? He said it's because of your doings, not because God's bad. It's not because God's mad. It is because of the evil doings. Verse 5, declare you in Judah and publish in Jerusalem and say, blow the trumpet in the land. Do you understand that? That's war. We are at war. It's coming to America. We will be hit. We will have war on our shores. There will be nuclear exchange in the world and in America. All the things that the prophets have prophesied will come to pass in America. It's going to happen. I don't know if it's tomorrow, but I know it's coming, and there's a payday for us someday. But I feel the urgency in my heart for the church to prepare itself to meet the maker of your life the creator, the one who has given you life in your soul. It's coming, folks. In America, I don't care what everybody else is saying. They're not listening. We're arrogant and think that the, that the steel of our military might and all these other things, the armor trees and all the things that we have, the weaponry, can protect us. It cannot protect us from an almighty God. Nebuchadnezzar was coming. Josiah was in power, and they had a quasi-revival, and the preachers were saying it was okay, and Jeremiah busted into the scene, and he said, it's not okay. They are coming. I can hear the sound of the hooves. And we're doing the same thing today, and the church is comatose. Too much fluoride in your water. Too many hormones in your food it's the truth because I look at people all the time every Sunday and they look like a dying calf or somebody on diabetic coma the eyes just going back in their head and saying oh my god can I ever get out of here while the entire world is raging do you realize they're having fights over in Pakistan and India now if I can do this all day long. And people say, well, no, no, the Vikings play today. And we think because it's over there, it's not here. It is here. We have been breached. The enemy's here. See, you tell this to people and they just look at you and they're just like, wow, the enemy's here. Okay. Yeah, I got it. No, what I'm telling you is your way of life is soon to end the way we've always known it in America. Do you think it is fair for those that are facing what they're facing around the world in danger of pearl and all those other things are going through and we sit back and everything's going to be fine and hunky-dory? Why? Because you're an American? You think you earned that right? I'm sorry, you're wrong. You did not earn that right. The blood of Christ 
gives us this right only when we walk in righteousness. But when we fail to walk in righteousness, then we lose a defense of God. That's why we have millions of people pouring into our country that don't have our best interests at heart. Do you understand? And it's not draining a system economically. That's only one tenet of war. That's only one aspect of war. That's only one prong of the plan. There's more coming. And I don't know how to articulate this to, to, to America and to the world. But we are in deep, deep, deep trouble. And if you continuously listen to those talking heads on the television and our politicians and all these suits and puppets, you're going to believe the mantra that everything's fine in this utopia. No, honey, this is the Titanic and we're sinking. Man, you say, ah, I should have stayed home. Maybe you should have. Blow you the trumpet in the land. Cry, gather together. Watch this. Gather, gather together. Say, assemble yourselves and let us go into the defense uh, cities. Set up the standard towards Zion. Retire and stay not. In other words, he's saying, find your place of a fortress because war is coming. Find your place or safe haven because war is coming. We try to tell you about the economic holocaust that's coming and people just living like it's no tomorrow, spending money, just doing all kinds of stuff instead of being wise with what God has given you. Getting out of the debt best you can. Do what you need to do. Get a second job if you have to. Sell some of the trash you own. Come on, somebody. Most of the stuff you have, it, it, it ain't worth the storage. Now, I'm talking to myself, too, because I love keeping stuff. My wife will throw it out the front door, and I'll go around the back door and put it somewhere else. She'll clean out the shed, and I'll put it under the shed. I'm going to need that bolt someday. <laughs> someday that old rusty nail is going to come in handy, that old mason jar. Are you with me? I don't know how many coffee cans I have in my, my barn. My gosh. Are you with me? I'm lighting it up for a reason. Because he said, blow the trumpet, assemble yourselves, get together. For watch this, verse 6. Set up the standard towards Zion. Retire and stay not, for I will bring evil from the north and a great destruction. That's what's coming to America. Our enemies are already here. They're going to destroy this mystery Babylon. Read. It's in your Bible. The lion has come up from his thicket, and the destroyer of the Gentile is on his way. He has gone forth from his place to make thy land desolate. Do you understand that Jeremiah saw Nebuchadnezzar coming supernaturally? As we are telling you today, our enemies are here. And we're supernaturally telling you of what is coming to America. And thy cities, watch this, he has gone from the north and his place to make thy land desolate, and thy city shall be laid waste without an inhabitant. You say that's impossible. Some of our cities today is not fit to live in. The only people that live in there are gang members. There are places that it's dangerous to go to. And we haven't seen the full force of war yet or nuclear destruction or enemies coming. And how could you sit back and say everything's just fine? I don't understand. I'm equipping myself for war. I said I'm equipping myself for war. First of all, my inner man to prepare. For this girder. You with sackcloth and lament and howl, for the fierce anger of the Lord is not turned back upon us or from us. And it shall come to pass at that day, saith the Lord, that the heart of the king shall perish, and the heart of the priest and the princess shall be astonished, and the prophets shall wander. In other words, I'm going to deal with everybody. Every form of society, every class in society will be dealt with. 
no matter who you are. Ask Matthew Perry. Is anybody here? I don't care where you are. Death will find you. And when it's your time, you better know Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. You don't matter where you are. You can be on a hot tub overlooking L.A. On top of the world. It won't make no difference. You better know Christ. No fame and fortune will pillow your fall. There's no safety net in your money. You better know Jesus. It's payday someday. Every man will get paid. Every man. Tall, small, great. It doesn't matter. You're going to pay. And what I'm warning you today is it's coming. And I can't articulate enough to you that what you're going to see in the coming days of the desolation and destruction of America is going to cause you to be astonished. And you're going to see pastors perish from the earth. You'll see prophets perish from the earth. And they will be silenced because they've led God's people astray and they've prostituted them and they've pimped them and they've molested them. And God says, not on my watch any longer. I'm telling you, folks, payday. Verse 10. Then said I, O Lord God, surely thou hast greatly deceived this people in Jerusalem, saying, you shall have peace, whereas the sword reaches unto what? The soul. Where does that the sword reach to? The soul. In other words, God says this. You can get by by watching war on television. That's easy. You just go ahead and get your pajamas on. Go ahead and pop your little popcorn. Kick on BBC, CBN, whatever, CNN, ABC, and sit there and watch the world go to hell in a handbasket from the comfort of your home. Are you here? But he said there's coming a time when that sword will reach your soul. Uh-huh. When will it reach your soul? It'll reach your soul when it comes to your house, when it comes to your finances, when it comes to your livelihood, when it comes to your mental capacity to understand what is happening. Because Jesus said the days will come that it will be so horrible that if he didn't cut it short, no man could be saved. Never in history will there be a time that we're fixing to face. But again, we're sitting back here. It's all over there. We're thinking, oh, no, no, it has nothing to do with me. Honey, it's coming to you. I said it's coming to a city. It's coming to a school. It's coming to a city near you. What you saw happen in Maine is nothing. It's an opening salvo of what's, company, of what's coming. What happened in Tampa just last, last night, those are small things. You wait till the schools are shot up. Churches and synagogues are shot up, just like they were already, but this time in ways that we could never imagine. You say that's coming, preacher? You better believe it. You better get your head out of your tail end and find out where you are in God and be, have situational awareness and know what time it is and lock and load. Lock and load the word and lock and load protection in your life. Don't be stupid. You trust somebody, you're stupid. You better trust the Lord. There are no atheists in the foxhole. You better know who labors among you. Are you with me? I'm not advocating any violence. What I'm telling you, we're in a violent world. We're living in a world where it's not safe to be a woman. It's not safe to be a young man. It's not safe to be a young girl. It's not safe to be elderly. It's just not safe without the blood of the Lamb. You ought to put on the whole armor every time you walk out of that house. Put the whole armor of God. Every time you strap into that car, plead the blood of Jesus. You light up that truck, man, you put on the blood of Jesus. Say, Lord, protect me from accidents, disease, malady, malfunctions. Yeah. Keep me from crazy people. Yeah. And if a devil comes my way, I bind it and cast that thing out. Yeah. And then just get the trucking. Is anybody here today, right. instead of putting on your favorite honky tonky music, whatever you do to get you moving? Come on now. Right. It's the truth. The, the, the old way of living's over. It's time to get serious. You're in a war for eternity, man. You're in a battle of the ages. 
It's time to be born again believers today, be warriors of Christ instead of some pacifist sissy. I'm, all, I'm, I'm tired of it. Is this okay? You'll love me? Just tell me you love me. Just smile. Because mm. I'm going to do it anyway. I'm just going to preach. Because I'm going to tell you, I had enough of this. I, I was watching some TikTok video of some, some furry who said, I'm not going to be drafted. Uh-uh. I'm going to go to the hills. That's exactly what he did. Flapped his little, little hand over. Said, they're going to have to find me. And I was laughing. I said, they'll find you, dude. He said, oh, yeah, I got a place to go where there's no electricity and no water, and I don't have to, or, or no electricity and no internet and stuff. I don't, I don't have to worry about them finding me. I'm like, you ever heard of a drone? <laughs> You're just stupid. E even, even some of our prepping people, you know, they're going to go hide in a rock. You can't hide in a rock, especially from God. The book of Revelation says that the great will try to hide. They say, Lord, let these rocks fall upon us. Hide us from the face of the one. Are you with me? It's insanity. And I look at this person, and I'm like, you're going to defend me? <laughs> Come on now. I'm not the strongest one in the bunch and the most athletic, but I'm going to tell you something. I'm not depending on that. <laughs> I may not be able to run fast, but I'll stand my ground. You're going to have to take me down. <laughs> Are you? Insanity. But this is exactly how people feel, and the Americans feel this way. You all know, send them over there. Let, let their people do this. And then it comes to our own shores, and we have people who are cowards. And the Bible's very specific of where cowards go, and liars read it. You better stand firm. You better be strong in the power of God's might. You better protect your children, love your wives, love your family. <sighs> feel good. Are y'all feeling good? Feeling good. Verse 10. I feel like I'm back in the military. Verse 10. Then said I, O Lord God, surely thou hast greatly deceived this people. Now notice Jeremiah, what he says here. Jeremiah is all messed up now. I felt like Jeremiah this morning. He says, Lord, you deceived your people in Jerusalem, saying, You shall have peace, whereas a sword reacheth unto the soul, and at that time that it shall be said to the people and to Jerusalem. Now watch this. He says, Lord, I don't understand this thing. I thought there was supposed to be the goodness and the prophecies and the promises conditionally of verse 1 and 2 and 3. I don't understand this thing. You ever been there? This is where the American church is at. We're so hot between two opinions because we've been promised such a rainbow of a promise of living this wonderful life of our 401ks and our retirements and our bass boats. Come on, somebody. Just make 30,000 easy payments of 1995, and it will be yours. It's a lifetime. It's for you forever. Think about it. And then all of a sudden, everything starts to decay. It's not what was promised, what we wrote and read and what we signed and all those different things. All of it's false. And our preachers have sold us a bag of lies. Now we're in problems and trials and tribulations and crisis and war. And we sit there and people are like, I, I, I don't know what to do. I, my, my pastor said this is the best of times, but this guy over here says we're all going to die. Uh, we're going to have war. Uh, this guy says, uh, just keep giving, man. God's going to bless us. The new day coming. This guy is saying there's a Holocaust coming financially. And we're halt between two opinions. Instead of reading the word of God and finding out what God has to say about it. And Jeremiah's like, man, I don't, I don't know what to do. Have you ever been there? Sure you'll have. Now, some people listen to me right now. That's where they are. They're saying, my God, what did I just tune into? That ain't what my pastor just said. Well, I can't help you with your pastor. Get you another pastor. I'm available. I'm not doing nothing until Jesus gets here. What you doing? And at that time he shall say to his people in Jerusalem, watch this, a dry wind of the high places in the wilderness towards the daughter of my people, not to fan nor to cleanse. Notice this, a wind is coming. Now, here's where you halt between two opinions, and you're as dumb as a box of rocks. 
for most church folks, not you guys, you guys are brilliant because you go to church here. I'm, ta I'm talking about those that all of a sudden they see a wind. Oh, it's a nice, refreshing wind. Oh, this is wonderful. Well, nobody's been looking at the radar. Nobody's listening to the weatherman. Nobody's watching the prophet holler and scream up and down, hey, my God, it's a whirlwind coming. No, it's, a, it's going to be a beautiful day today. This is what he's saying, but it ain't coming as a fan. The whirlwind that is coming, the wind that is coming is not a fan. Watch this, verse 12. Are you still with me? Because I got about another two hours. Even if somebody, somebody wrote and said, why don't you just keep preaching past an hour? Because I'm constrained by radio, that's why. Verse 12. E you want to send more money? I'll, I'll get two hours on, on the radio. How's that? Even a full, no, I don't, I don't mean that, Pastor, at all. An hour is good. I was thinking 30 minutes. Even a full wind. What did he say? A full wind. From, from those places shall come unto me. Now also will I give sentence against him. He said, I'm going to let this thing be a hurricane. This ain't going to blow you off your feet. It's going to knock your toupee off. It's going to blow your weave out. It's going to straighten your curl. It's going to curl your straight hair. It's going to mess you up. I'm telling you, folks, as I'm standing right here, rewind this thing when it hits you and your address and it hits our nation. Rewind this message because it's going to be like, what in the world just happened? You're going to be way ahead of folks because you're going to be like, oh, that's just the full wind of God. It's a terrorist attack. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, we were warned about it. Full wind. Your preacher was a bag of wind, and God said there's a full wind coming. So you'd listen to old baggy over there rather than hearing what God had to say. Man, I could preach on a bag of wind. I'm telling you right now. That's all it is. I don't know how you can go to church like that, an old wind bag up there. Little crusty thing, giving no life, giving no truth, bringing you to a place of preparedness in God. I don't, I don't know how people do it. I could not sit in a church like that. I just couldn't do it. You, you find me at the house, watching me. Verse twelve. Even a full, I don't know how I would do it. Even for the full wind, those places shall come unto me. Now also will I give sentence against them. What do he say? I'm going to judge them payday behold he shall come up as the clouds and his chariot shall be as a whirlwind who's he talking about Nebuchadnezzar the enemy is going to come in like a full wind they're here and, and I've, I've told you and I've reminded you of the prophecies of great prophets of the past who prophesied decades ago of Russia coming to America and the Chinese and our enemies I don't have to repeat their names, but they're out there. They've been saying, it, it's been echoing in our hearts for years. But we got sophisticated in the house of God. Too many abominations in our hearts, and we become dull, and we don't want to hear and say, oh, no, that's just some old fuddy dud from back then. You're watching it right now. They are poised to take America out. Do you know that? They don't give a rip about your daily life. They don't care. When they cut those babies' heads off in Israel, do you think they cared? There was murder in their eyes. And they'll murder you as they murdered Americans there and still have Americans as hostage. But, oh, no, you're special. You're special because you have AARP or something else to protect you. Blue cloths and blue shield. No. You're not protected but by the blood of Christ. It's only the goodness of God that we stand in the land of freedom right now at this moment and to do something with it, and that is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and warn every man that you're going to stand before an awesome God. Who missed your assignment with Matthew Perry? I don't know. 
I don't know his inner circle. I don't know anybody around him. But I know he was warned. How do I know? Because God's a good God. I said God is a good God. And he warns all men, no matter who they are. You can be in deep sin. God will warn men. Because every man has that inner voice that God speaks to and speaks through. Watch this. Full winds coming, chariots are coming, whirlwind as horses swifter than eagles. In other words, faster than you can imagine. When the enemy hits us, it'll be so fast. When the first nuclear round goes off in the Middle East and God begins to turn off the financial valve to America, it'll be fast. You won't have time to go get your money. You won't have time to do all these different things. I'm going to tell you something prophetically that's been going on in my heart the past couple of days. I've been sharing with my wife. I said, I feel like we're in musical chairs. I'm not a man of panic. I'm a man of, of faith. But I'm going to tell you, I feel like musical chairs. I feel like at any moment the music's going to stop. And when I used to play that game because I was pudgier when I was younger, I'd lose a lot until I learned how to knock somebody down and get that chair. And then I was kicked out of the game. I didn't know you couldn't do that. But I got tired of being the pudgy one and not getting there fast enough. Is anybody here? So now I'm older. I'm not so pudgy. And I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose my opportunity. I don't want to lose the opportunity and be caught off guard. And all of a sudden, there it is. The music stops, and I'm standing, and I'm holding that bag. I'm holding whatever's in my hands. I'm holding this that I could have got rid of or whatever. You know what I'm talking about? I don't like musical chairs, but I feel like that's what's happening in our lives today. Watch this. I'm closing. I don't want to close, but I got to. Verse 14, O Jerusalem, wash thine heart from what? Wickedness, that thou mayest be saved. Isn't that beautiful? Just wash yourself. How long shall thou have vain thoughts lodged within thee? Notice that lodged within thee. For a voice declareth from Dan and publish affliction from Mount Ephraim. Make you mention to the nations, behold, publish against Jerusalem that watchers come from a far country and give out their voice against the cities of Judah. As keepers of a field are they against her round about. In other words, they've seen the weaknesses of your nation. They've seen the places where you are not having a place of defense. Do you know our enemies know us better than we know ourselves? Yes, they do. They've been prodding and probing us for a long time. The enemy is in the camp. They're in our nation. They've used their ability through the Communist Manifesto to rid us of righteousness and the sanctity of marriage and of life by giving us divorce and giving us abortion and giving us homosexuality and lesbianism and all these other decay and de decomposing elements and agents of our lives. It's all been planned. And I blame the keepers of the gate. And they are against round about because she hath been rebellious against me. Why are they here? Right there. Rebellion. Why is this happening, preacher? I don't understand why people are shooting up people and people are just so mean. Everything's so bad and all these different things are happening. Right there. Rebellion. I, I don't understand these things. I, I can't figure this out. Why, why Everything's going to hell in the handbasket and my money don't go as far as it used to. Oh, them, them, them bad people up there in Washington. No, rebellion. Rebellion breeds rebellion. Just as cancer runs through every cell, it has run through this country and its payday. Finally, in verse 18, 
Thy ways and thy goings have procured these things unto thee. Are you reading what I'm reading? Your ways brought it on. Your ways brought it on. This is why wickedness, because it is, this is thy wickedness, because it is bitter, because it reacheth unto thine heart, just like that cancer. Verse 19, my bowels, my bowels, I am pained at my very heart. My heart maketh a noise in me. I cannot hold my peace, because thou heard, O oh, my soul, the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war. Do you understand what is happening in our country today? This echoes my heart. It echoes my plea for us to recognize and realize there's an alarm of war. Destruction upon destruction is cried, for the whole land is spoiled. Suddenly are my tents spoiled and my curtain in a moment. Finally, I want you to go to the end of the chapter, and I want you to look at this in verse 31, and then I'm going to close with great protest because I could do this for a long time. For I have heard a voice as a woman in travail. Lady Liberty. And the anguish of her that bringeth forth her first child. The voice of the daughter of Zion that bewelleth herself. That spreadeth her hands saying, woe is me now. Why is she crying? She's crying for the loss of her children. She's crying for the loss of her love. She's crying for the loss of her lovers. For my soul is wearied because of murderers. In verse 30, it talks about her playing the harlot. That She widened the eyes and she put on gold apparel and she tried to seduce the invading armies with sexual favors. And I want you to know, you can't appease the devil because what little bit you give him, he wants it all. America, it's payday. And you've appeased the devil and you've given him a little and he's going to take the rest. And it's time for us in the house of God to prepare for war. If you're watching me right now and you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and maybe a lot of this stuff doesn't really make sense to you, just know this, that God loves you with an amazing love. And repentance is all that he asks, that you just turn your heart away from your sin and ask Jesus into your heart because he loves you that much. If you're backslidden, this message has hit you. Come on, it's time to get it right with God. It's time to prepare for war. It's time to get closer to your God. Father, thank you for this message and this opportunity to declare and decree your message to the world. May the name of Jesus be glorified, and may we realize that that payday has already been paid on the cross. In Jesus' name, amen.